College football is celebrating 150 years. The Patriot League Network is commemorating this milestone by checking in with some of the incredible leaders of today. These Patriot League graduates all have unique stories, but share a similarity in establishing leadership and character on the gridiron. Today, we have one of the top quarterbacks to have played in the Patriot League 1990 Lafayette graduate, Frank Bauer. He passed for 7,324 yards and 62 touchdowns in his career. Bauer also led the nation in passing efficiency in 1988. That led to his famous appearance on the cover of the 1989 Sports Illustrated College Football Preview. Frank, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. If you've made it on the cover of Sports Illustrated as an athlete, you've made it. And looking back on it, to bring Lafayette to the forefront of college football, what was the most gratifying part of that experience for you? Well, first, I want to thank you for having me, Morgan. Um, it's an honor to represent the Patriot League and Lafayette College. And looking back on that, at the time, so many things were happening. Um, it was just one more thing that was kind of happening. When you're in the moment, it was a lot of fun for, you know, my friends, my teammates, my coaches, you know, Lafayette alumni all over the country. We had a great time with it. But it's almost like I appreciate it more now looking back on it. I have SI out in the waiting room in my office here, you know, and you see the latest cover, you know, and I have it up on the wall here. And that's, that's really when it hits me, like how important that was. And uh, it's something I'll always have too. And I still get them sent, you know, people that collect them all over the country. You know, they actually mail them to you, you know, to sign them and mail them back. And it's a lot of fun. So I actually do appreciate it a lot more today than I did then, you know, because I'm not in the moment now, you know, and you know what's happened and you know, you're a little wiser and you look back on things with a little different lens. A big piece of that story in Sports Illustrated was on your piano. I read that your mom forced you into taking lessons when you were younger. How grateful, though, now are you for all of those lessons? Oh, she always tells me, you know, if I let you quit, that wouldn't have happened. So absolutely, I'm actually grateful. You know, everybody takes piano lessons when they're younger. For the most part, my brother and sister did. But mom just recognized that I actually had an ability and she didn't want me to waste it. And I actually took that to Lafayette. You know, you can play piano, you know, from age eight to 18 and then you go off to college. And that was when I switched over to jazz piano just to learn a different style of playing. And I still use it today. Christmas Eve is the biggest night, you know, at mom's house. And I'm at the piano year after year now. And it's something that you just have for life. And I owe it all to her because I would have quit a thousand times probably, but she just kept on it. And um, it was a big angle too for Sports Illustrated because you don't see that combination of ability, athletics with music. You must be everyone's favorite at family parties, but transitioning back to football after your playing days were over, you went to Bloomsburg University to get your doctorate in audiology. What led you to gain interest in that field? That was back to mom again. And uh, it's a recurring theme actually, because mom's worked in this field since I'm 10 or 11. So she actually worked for an audiology and ear, nose and throat practice in our area. So I always had exposure to audiology. And then, you know, you go through college, you know, and you go down different paths. And then I actually rediscovered what I wanted to do in, you know, the early 2000s. And I went back to Bloom at night. We opened our office here and I went back to Bloom at night to get a doctorate degree. It's just her and I, she's actually still the office manager here. And, you know, I owe it all to her. And just hearing her stories at dinner as to how they help people that day or whatever, how they were doing it. And it's something I always got an interest in. And it always has, too, a connection, too, with music. Everyone's like, how do you go from a music major to an audiologist? Well, it's pitch and, you know, frequency and tone and on and on. So it makes sense. I explain it that way, too, to people, and it makes a lot of sense. So it's uh, it was an obvious choice to become an audiologist. Four years of college football at Lafayette. How did playing college football, being a student athlete, really prepare you for the career that you have today? Well, whenever, you know, you're in a sport, even a team sport, especially a team sport, you know, you learn how to know what your role is. You know, 11 guys on a team, on a field at once, we all have a job to do. You owe it to the guy next to you to do your one specific job for that one play. So you learn how to lean on people. You learn how to make goals as a group. As a quarterback, especially with the exposure that we were getting back in the late 80s, I actually learned how to kind of become like the face of something, which is what I use here at Amplified Hearing. It just became natural to kind of put my face onto it. You know, it's our office, but it's on me kind of a thing. 
So, and I also work at Penn State Hershey Medical Center. That's a true team environment. That's the healthcare team. So you're one part of a uh, patient flow experience. So I have to know what my role is and do what I'm supposed to do to get it on to the next appointment so it runs efficiently and the patient has an experience. You know, you learn life lessons through sports and team sports, but it's been that leadership role pretty much that has been the biggest thing that I've used since. The practice that you're the face of is in your hometown in Northeast Pennsylvania. How rewarding is this to do it in your own community? Yeah, it's actually awesome because uh, I can't tell you, you know, when you grow up, you know, you're in school, you're on sports teams, you take, you know, music lessons, whatever you have instructors, you know, you have instructors, you have mentors, you have little league coaches and football coaches. And it's funny when you lean on to them, you know, you're leaning on them throughout your early life you know, to mold you into who you are. And I'm seeing those people now that are relying on me to help them later on in life. So it's a unique ability to actually take an old coach, have them come to me vulnerable, me being able to make them feel easy, make them feel comfortable and appreciated, and hopefully change their life too from a hearing perspective, which you hear all the time. So it's a unique position to give back. And I've seen so many teachers and like I said, literally coaches, parents of my old friends and on and on. It's actually great to be doing this back at home and just not some random city where which would still be great audiology wise, you know, but it is really unique to be back home helping people that I grew up with. After nearly 30 years since your playing days, you're still close enough though to Lafayette to check in on some home football games. What's your favorite part of being back in Easton on a Saturday in the fall? It's just uh, walking around the campus, you know, that becomes, you know, when you walk around the campus, you know, you're looking at the buildings that were important to you when you need to live there and experience that college life. It's just kind of walking around campus that you just feel back at home. It's not so much sitting watching a game. It's just having the kids back with you, telling them where you did what, you know, what buildings you were in and on and on. So that's what I like going back and doing. We'll actually sit and watch some of the game and then just go wandering around. And I have more fun doing that, getting back on the hill. You know, those four years in college go so fast, but it sticks with you for life, you know? It's a large part of who you are at that important stage of life when you're, you know, you're learning to be on your own and everything. And you, and you always take that with you. And I walk around there and I think about, you know, all the experiences we had. And uh, uh, that's what I like about it the most, actually. Frank, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. I hope to see you one day on the sidelines in Easton at a game. I will be down there, Morgan. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.